Hi, this is Kevin Zahner, and I wanted to share with you 10 Google Drive hacks for education. If you're an advanced user, these might not seem like hacks, but if you're a beginner or intermediate, some of these tips might really help you uh, increase the efficiency of your classroom routines or just your day-to-day -day using of Google Drive. What does it mean to hack? In this case, we're just talking about the clever solutions to tricky problems. Insert a comment, double click the area, click Control, Alt, and M, and your comment space appears on the right. So if we're going to stylize our comments, as you can see here it says bold, but there's an asterisk on the left and an asterisk on the right with no space from the, from the D to the asterisk. Um, that would make it bold. So for the strike through you do a hyphen and for italicize you do underscore. And there we go. When I share folders with my students, I share via link on my website or in Google Classroom. And I just double check these share settings. Um, anyone with link can edit, which is perfect for uh, documents that we want to be able to share and edit. If I just want to let them uh, view the documents though, I might have to change it to view. Okay, so hack number four is about using Google Docs for managing your projects, or in this case, we're actually managing our unit content. So this is 3.1 for my world history class and as you can see there's uh, different standard numbers so they have the standard reference they could reference the advanced placement curriculum if they wanted to but what I've done here is written questions from the standards that we're going to be using in, in class I've written the the power standards in bold and then some more of the guiding questions um, they're a little bit quicker and easier to do uh, a little bit smaller now for example I actually included all the activities that we do in class on this document. So this is actually a map activity and students are just going to drag these text boxes to the proper location on the map. The outline and map is just loading right now. That happens as we know with Google Drive. So when they put the, the, the text boxes in the right places, they'll be able to uh, control K and look up a link, perhaps on Wikipedia or another source that they're more that they're comfortable with, um, and then we can download it as a PDF, and this becomes a resource for them to study. So it's just really great to use this one thing for all my slide presentations. Here's the slide presentation. Here's our vocabulary, our Quizlet decks, and it's just simple. Why would I put the curriculum and the resources in, in, in you know, four or five different places? I just keep it all in one place. Here's an example of one class using one document to take notes. They're separated into groups and we use tables to give each student a space to work in so they could all type at the same time. The first group was Ming, Ching, Tokugawa. The second group was Ottoman, Mughal, Safavids. And you can notice that I was able to add comments as they were. Here's an image that I used for a recent blog post. And it actually just uses a couple of different tools. The first tool that I used was the circle uh, cropping tool, which I actually used to crop this image in the back. And the other one was the image options transparency tool. If your students don't have access to YouTube at school, you can flip your classroom or support a blended learning environment with Google Drive. So I have all my videos for this particular unit in this folder and students will just use the links that I give them to view them. So I'm combining these unit documents. Here's the end of the first unit and here's the beginning of the second. And we're doing it with a table of contents. We need to add headers. So Control-Alt-1 gives me a header 1. If we scroll up to the top, we'll just refresh our table of contents and the link should appear. There we go. This hack is about using slides beyond your traditional PowerPoint use. 
you could do digital storytelling. You can embed a video from YouTube and include questions. Perhaps you want to make a book. Now this is where you're going to have to play with the print options to make books and this is actually turned uh, 90 degrees so that the print, when you print it, you can fold it certain ways. Or you could do uh, notes. Uh, this is a change over time or in this case you could, what's the character like at the beginning of the story, what's the character like at the end of the story and what stayed the same. This is nice to do notes because each student or group can have a different slide and all your student notes, class notes, can be on one document. Um, here we have um, perhaps a photo essay, right, where students are telling a story um, and including maybe a summary sentence that goes with a photo. We could also make a slideshow to add to a website, and in this case using the slideshow maker on, on Google Sites. Um, you could make uh, activity cards or flashcards. And you could also just use it for um, visual analysis. This is my favorite. It's so simple yet so powerful. What do you see? What makes you say that? And then it's really important, really simple, to work on those summarizing skills. Uh, to just ask the students to do something like um, uh, make a title for this image. If you're sharing documents with people who are going to make copies, go up to the top and change edit on the end of the URL to copy. If you give them that link, when they get it into their browser or click on the link, they'll have an option to make a copy.